After an indifferent 2018, England's preparations for a tough set of November tests are well underway. And head coach Eddie Jones gave us his opinion on their progress with less than a year to go until the Rugby World Cup. It's a four-year project and the only time you need to be at your best is in the fourth year. And the only time you need to be at your best in the fourth year is your crunch match at the World Cup, which may be a pool game, maybe a quarter final. Because once you get the semi and the final, it's a, you know, you've got four great teams or two great teams, and it's a toss of the coin then. So, that, so you've got to peak at the right time, and, and the World Cup preparation is not getting too excited. Like everyone's going to get excited in November. But in reality, those games aren't going to be great benchmarks for what happens at the World Cup. You find out things about the team, uh, how you can possibly beat a team, but you don't want to show them everything. They were a bit seduced about wanting to play modern rugby, whatever that is, you know, playing with width, playing from side to side, but they've gone back to being a side that, you know, They've got the most dominant mall in world rugby now. In the rugby championship, I think statistically they had the best defence, which has always been the hallmarks of Springbok rugby. And, and the, then you add in a Villy LaRue and a Faf de Klerk that can do something a little bit different. And you've got a pretty strong team and, that, and that's what we're seeing at the moment. They like the game to be an athletic contest. They like to move the ball around. They're very street smart rugby players, I think. Because you go to New Zealand, you see kids always playing rugby, so they're always playing small games, they're always learning ways to win. And I think, you know, with that, they've developed a, a culture in, in New Zealand of players who can work things out. And to that, because of the influence of Graham Henry and Steve Hansen, who both coached in Wales, they've brought that accuracy and that discipline of the set piece. You know, if you look at the stats of World Rugby now, the All Blacks in line out and scrum are always either one or two. So they've got that solidarity up front. They've, got, they've still got the ability to move the ball and they've got that ability to adapt, so it makes them such a hard team to beat. I'm sure Michael Leach won't mind me sharing a conversation I had with him recently at Japan when they play anyone who was ranked above them expected to lose and they were happy to, to try hard, score 10 points at the end of the game, lose 50 to 20, everyone would clap at the end and it'd be okay. But now the young players coming through because of what happened at the World Cup and because they've seen Japan can win, the expectation externally and now the expectation internally of the team is, is to win and they're not frightened of anyone now. Yeah, and that always makes them a bit more dangerous. Guys like Gitto you know, played for Toulon, they come back and they talk about European rugby of the high quality, so I think there's a much more favourable impression. Probably in the older days it was probably seen as pretty down and pretty uh, unexciting. I remember when we'd come over we'd always felt the only way we could beat England was the fact that we could negate their strengths, which was the maul and the scrum. If we could get parity in that area and then move the ball around, we had a great chance of winning the game. 